Today on CJ Off-Road, we're gonna increase the horsepower and torque and let our Jeep breathe a little bit easier by adding on this brand new AirAid MXP cold air intake. So the AirAid MXP intake is going to fit your 2018 to 2020 Jeep JL Wrangler as well as your brand new Gladiator. Both of them need to be equipped with a 3.6 liter for this to work. And one of the things I like about AirAid is that they use a reusable filter here which is going to increase horsepower up to 12 horsepower and up to 10 foot-pounds of torque. And these are ratings just based on what AirAid has tested. I haven't tested this personally, but AirAid is a well-known company and I really believe them when they say you can get some increase in your power out of your Jeep Wrangler. One of the nice things about this is it is completely molded to fit your JL without any modification required, and it's a sealed airbox once you get everything installed. So you're not gonna have to worry about mud, dust, or water when you go out on the trail. This thing is gonna be completely sealed and last a very long time. One of the nice things too about the filter is that you can clean it and reuse it. So that's a super nice thing to have in your Jeep. And as you can see, it is a heck of a lot bigger than the factory intake, allowing more air into your engine, allowing it to breathe easier. So that being said, we've got our 2020 Jeep Gladiator behind me with a brand new 3.6 liter engine. We're gonna go ahead and get this installed and see how it looks. And I'm gonna take you guys through the step-by-step -step installation instructions to let you guys know how to do it. So as I've taken off a couple of these before, the JL and JT factory intakes are super simple to remove. The only tool you're gonna need is a trim removal tool and a 10 millimeter socket, and also an eight or a flathead screwdriver to pull off the clamp on the throttle body. First, we're gonna start with a 10 over towards the passenger side, remove this bolt, and then two in the center. So right here's a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna use a gun to make it a little bit quicker. Just get that pulled out and set aside, then we can move to the center. In the center here, you have your PCV hose, which simply removes by pushing the gray section and pushing it backwards. Might be a little bit tight since it's the first time we're removing it, but it'll pop right off. And we'll move on to these two 10 millimeters that hold on the center section of the intake tube. Get those loose. And then we can move on to our mass airflow sensor here by simply depressing this and pulling off the back of the sensor. And that's where you need your trim removal tool to pull both of these push tabs out. Simply go underneath them with the trim removal tool. Just rock them back and forth until they pop out. You can do this with a flathead screwdriver too, so you don't really need to get any specialty tools. The last bolt to be loosened is on the band clamp that holds this tube onto the throttle body. Grab an eight millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver and loosen that up. And with that, we are ready to remove our intake. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off the throttle body first. After it's off the throttle body, you can see that this section is free. We'll work down to the air box and give that a nice pull. It comes straight up and there you have it, it's removed. So we're now back on the table here and there is some assembly that AirAid requires you to do before you can put this in. First thing we're gonna do is put the PCV hose adapter into the intake tube. There's a threaded section with a brass piece in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and get that started. Get it as tight as I can by hand and then go back with a three quarter inch box wrench or a socket and just get that nice and snug. We'll also need to remove our mass airflow sensor from the factory intake tube. That's gonna sit right over here next to where the throttle body connection is. In order to get that removed, there's a small tab where this actually locks over. I like to use a set of needle nose pliers, but be very careful as you don't wanna crack anything. Simply lean it back towards you to get over that tab. You can see a small one there and then twist it as far as it'll go. So it has to go counterclockwise in order for it to be removed, and then just rock it back and forth and pull it straight out. And there you can see we've removed it and it's uh, not broken or anything, so we did a good job. So it's pretty much right in the same location on the aerate intake tube. You're gonna go ahead and grab your rubber grommet and put that into the hole. It's gonna be a nice and tight fit. Once you get the grommet installed, then you can reinstall your mass airflow sensor. Try not to push the grommet through as you twist this on. I like to kind of rotate it at the same time, get it in there. And once it's on there too, make sure that this retention tab is facing horizontal to the ground. That way you know that the sensor is up and down and getting a correct mass airflow reading. The next thing we want to do is grab our intake housing and we are going to install the AirAid viewport. Now you want to put it exactly like so with the lettering facing you. And in order to do that, make sure the larger opening is facing towards you and the smaller one here is where it's going to pull in from the outside. The smaller port is going to be down here and that's what's actually going to suck in the air to make sure you can read the AirAid logo. 
Go ahead and grab the smaller of the Allen key bolts with a washer. Go through the outside. And then you're gonna put a, another washer in there. And there's nylon locking nuts that go behind. I'm just gonna get that one snug, that way it holds it up. Put the second one in there. Grab another washer and a nylon lock nut. Using a four millimeter Allen key and a 10 millimeter socket on the back, we're gonna go ahead and get these snugged up. You don't have to be crazy tight. This is plastic and some plexiglass, so. Okay, that step's done. So at the bottom of your air intake box, what you're gonna have is two of these extensions or protrusions here that actually need to go into the factory rubber grommets on your Jeep. Now they're just bare here, but what you're gonna do is grab the pieces that look like this with a threaded hole on the bottom. These are gonna stick like that and actually go into the rubber section. In order to get these on, you're gonna go ahead and grab your standard 10 millimeter bolt, a lock washer, and a regular washer. Put these in place, go in through the intake tube, and then we'll try to finesse this through, just like that. And we can start to just thread that on. Get that one started. Go over to the next one, do the exact same thing. Get that one started. Then we're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to get that tightened up. We're gonna use a gun again too, just to make it a little bit quicker. If you have one, definitely a great, uh, great thing to use. It'll speed up your install time. Those are both nice and tight, so we can move on to the next step. So the next step is going to be to grab this intake tube piece, which holds on your filter inside the air intake box. What we're gonna do is slide this over, sorry about that, slide this over the larger section. Actually set that down and see if we can work it on. Just like so. And then there's a hose clamp that goes onto the air filter. Get that one tightened up with an eight millimeter socket. Once it's nice and tight, grab your air box, and then this will get set right like so. That's gonna have these beveled edges up towards the top to match the air box. In order to get this on, there are going to be four matching Allen key bolts. What we're gonna go ahead and do is grab our flat washers, Put one on each of the bolts. I'm just gonna go around and loosely get each one started. That one started as well. More down here at the bottom. And we can get these tightened up with a four millimeter Allen key once again. Make sure it's nice and flush up at the top and looking good. All these screws are started too. Make sure you have all of them started before you go and tighten down any one of them. The last modification we need to make to the Jeep isn't a permanent one either. We have to install this rubber grommet, and what this is allowed to do is for us to bolt the airbox onto a solid point to make sure it stays up in its location nice and tight. In order to do that, remove this second from the outside bolt. It'll take a 10 millimeter, and you don't need anything on the backside because there's a nut welded on. Get that removed, set it out of the way, and grab your rubber piece, actually thread it in there. I just like to get that nice and snugged up. It's not gonna go anywhere once you get that bolt tightened down from the inside of the airbox. So that's good to go there. You don't really need this bolt anymore, but in case you go back to stock, just keep it around. Moving on to the throttle body, use the smaller of the two rubber adapters and slide it over the throttle body, ensuring that you're completely over and it's a nice and tight seal. Two of the small band clamps will go over, one connects it to the throttle body, and this one will go to the intake tube. Don't have any of them tightened down yet because I'm gonna put the intake tube on next. Next, we'll grab our intake tube, slide it onto that rubber adapter that we just installed. Once again, ensuring that we've got a full seal all the way around. 
And I really don't like to tighten anything down until we're all the way done. That way I still have a little bit of motion here when we get the air box in on that side. So next step is gonna to be to install our air box. The first thing I wanna do is double check that you have these little rubber pieces that go down in here into the metal bracket that holds on the air box. Normally they don't pull off, but I kind of pulled on the air box pretty hard so they popped out. Make sure that you have them back in. Normally they'll hang onto the air box or they'll just stay in, but that's where those sections we bolted onto the air box will pop into. When I put those in, I also like to put a little lubricant just to make them slide in a little easier. Grabbing our assembled air box with the adapter and two hose clamps in this orientation, I'm gonna go ahead and set it into place and work it first onto the intake tube. Like so. And then we'll push it down into the rubber grommets we just reinstalled. Then the last step is gonna be to work over here on that rubber isolator we also installed. There's a hole on this side of the air box that's going to accept the 10 millimeter bolt. This will be the last bolt you have. And you're gonna go ahead and thread that into the rubber section. It is a tighter fit, but if you use a ratchet and a deep socket, we'll see if we can do it. Like I mentioned before, the last step for me is to tighten down all the band clamps. We've got all these hoses and couplings in the exact spot and everything is tight. The first two I'm gonna tighten down are these here by the throttle body using an eight millimeter socket or you can use a flathead screwdriver. After you have both of those tightened, we're gonna work down towards the air box, make sure it's fully seated and get both of those tight as well. Last two things you need to hook up are your mass airflow sensor, which is gonna go right onto the plug that we installed onto the tube. You'll hear a click and you know that that's fully seated. Then you've got your PCV hose in the center section, which is gonna slide over this. And also another click and that's fully seated. You can close your hood and your install is complete. Now that you have everything tightened up, your Airaid MXP filter is now installed properly. So about an hour later, we've got the Airaid MXP cold air intake installed on our brand new 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Overall, the installation was really simple and the only tools you're gonna need are a four millimeter Allen key, eight millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, a ratchet and a trim removal tool or flathead screwdriver. Now I'd highly recommend if you do have a Jeep and you're looking for some more performance, definitely check the Airaid MXP cold air intake out. It was super simple to install, plus it retains all of the factory connections that your engine has going to your cold air intake. What I really like is that you can service the filter and keep this for the lifetime of the Jeep and not have to replace anything up under the hood. Now, like I said before, AirAid claims that this is going to increase your horsepower by 12 horsepower and increase your torque by 10 foot-pounds of torque. That's a pretty good gain, and I'd like to see that out of our Gladiator as we are running some larger wheels and tires. This will pair perfectly with an aftermarket exhaust on your JL or JT and really help your engine perform under more strenuous circumstances. Now, if you want to find this intake as well as many other great parts for your Wrangler or JT Gladiator, be sure to check us out at cjponyparts.com. Hope you enjoyed that video. To stay up to date on our CJ Off-Road videos, make sure to subscribe up top here. And for any other installs, make sure to click the link right above.